Oh god, honestly. It's weird, I feel like up close, I don't look so bad, but then I move away. Hmm, no. Hmm, okay. Shouldn't it be the opposite way round? Shouldn't you look worse close up and better further away? See, I, I look kind of alright. Terrible. Alright. Terrible. Alright. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. So as you may or may not remember, last week I did a video where I basically showed you some of the plants in the shop that were doing particularly well, or they were looking particularly nice, or anything else. And I did try to show you plants that maybe I don't always show on camera, stuff like that, just so to, you know, to keep it fresh. But this week I thought I'd show you some of the stuff that I'm just not very happy with. Not like super, super gnarly stuff, that's possibly for another video, but just stuff I'm not not happy with it all. Like looking to the side of me now, I've got plants that are deformed, plants that are a bit crispy. I've got really slow growers, like real slow growers. And I have some yellowing stuff as well. So I have a little bit of a, a mix. I think we're just going to pick them up and I'll try and diagnose them if I can. Right then, first plant is this guy. This is just one of them. It doesn't represent this specific plant in this case, because some of them do. This is, what is it? It's a Syngonium strawberry ice. I had to really think about that. So this is Syngonium strawberry ice. It's not grown, guys. It just doesn't grow. Like, I find a lot of these are very, very slow. They don't improve very quickly. Now, what I will say is, I have one of these in my studio upstairs, and it's grown ridiculous. And a couple of weeks ago now, I did a basically an updated tour of my studio, and there was a strawberry ice up there and it looked insanely big and it's like, whoa, what on earth? These guys, not as good. And that, which does lead me to think it's a light thing, not so much a feed thing. You could disagree with me. And if you keep these at home or one of these or whatever, let me know if you know the secret to sizing them up. I have a lot of Syngonium in here and they do get the same treatment because they kind of have to. That is actually why I can only really stock certain plants because they need to all receive very similar treatment. But this one compared to any other Syngonium, just doesn't grow. I don't even think I've propagated any of these. And I've had them a long time, if you guys remember. I feel like I got them in, it was either really early this year or really late last year. And they just don't do anything. I'm not even kidding. This is basically the size that it was. Now, it has got some aerials here. You probably can't tell. It's got some aerials round about here anyway. But that's only been very recent. And it's not really enough for me to cut it because... These Syngonium don't seem to function like any other Syngonium. They're just a lot more difficult to work with. I don't really like how they grow. I don't like the color. I don't like the formation. I just don't like them. I don't like them. Ben doesn't like them. I don't know if you guys like them. I just don't like them. It was one of these plants where I did buy it in for the shop and that's why I have it because I personally do not like them at all. They haven't really proven their worth in this shop and they do take up a bit of space. So I will probably get rid of them very soon because I don't really want them. It's taken too long. And honestly, when you run a shop, you learn very quickly that, you know, a shelf is, you know, prime real estate. So you don't want something that doesn't really grow and is not necessarily loved by many. You don't want that taking up any space on your shelves. It's, it's not very good investment. So I may do something with these. I don't really know, but I am, I am not impressed. Who would be impressed with this? I know I wouldn't. Right, on to another slow grower, although I do love this plant. This is one of my favorite plants. And the weird thing is about this plant, this plant sizes up really well and it grows quite quickly because I also have one of these in the studio. I also have one at home and they do grow really quickly and they grow well. But I don't know what it is about taking, you know, like a node cutting, because that's actually how I propagated this plant. Taking a node cutting and growing it from that just has not done well for it. And this could be a feed thing. If I was to diagnose this, I would say it was feed. But this here, can you tell? I mean, it does have a tag, but you can... Well, maybe you can, maybe you can't. This is actually a baby Glorious, Philodendron Glorious. Now, I took these myself. Uh, when did I take these? Very late last year. I think even at some point when I was filming the documentary, I was doing this as well. That's how old these are. These have been in here a long time. I think there's two in here, actually. So we have this tall one that is there. And then you do actually have at the front here. This one here is a separate plant at the front. I just can't really turn it through. Maybe you can see there, it's really hard to not get it to focus on my makeupless face, but it's grown really well. Don't get me wrong. It's, you know, it's not suffering from humidity. It's got nice form. 
it's just the sheer amount of time it's taken to take off. Now I can see that the roots actually aren't amazing. I think on these, the roots don't get really good until the plants mature anyway, so it's never gonna be you know, amazing, but maybe I'm being too harsh, but I expected a lot more from this plant. I do propagate Glorious mainly now from cuttings rather than node cuttings. It really depends. Like if I get a Glorious in and it loses all of its leaves, I'm gonna turn it into node cuttings probably and just go back that way because I know personally that this plant does quite well that way and I can handle it. But if I get a big plant in and it's choppable and it's got good aerials and good foliage, then I won't. I'll just take cuttings and do it that way. So although these had good survivability from a node prop, they just don't grow very quick. Like I really expected more. Don't get me wrong, it's very adorable. I don't know how long I'll wait to sell this. I don't know if I should let it grow bigger and grow into a plant that, you know, I would normally sell. So leaves maybe like that big or keep it as a mother plant or grow it a little bit bigger and get the roots stronger and just sell it this way. Let me know actually what you prefer. Like if you were to buy this plant or replace this plant with, I don't know, some plant that you liked, would you prefer to buy it like this, but cheaper? Or would you prefer to buy it larger, but more expensive or somewhere in the middle? I like to go for somewhere in the middle because I just feel like survivability in the male is a little bit better sometimes depending on the plant. But let me know what you think. Don't get me wrong, he's very, very cute. He's nice. He's just been with me way too long. Right, next plant I've got. This is very heavy. This has been recently watered. This plant, unfortunately, is such a slow grower. I'm gonna hold it up while I talk about it to see if I can get a good... I might have to hold it in front of me. Um, you might not be able to tell what this is, but this is one slow ass plant. And I'm pretty sure people that own these might agree with me. So this is, what is it? It's Monstera... Is it Monstera Burly Marks Flame? Or Monstera SP Brazil? I can't remember. I think it's known as Burly Marks Flame now. And it, it, I can't hold this thing up. But basically, um, they look amazing if you want to Google it. Trust me, it'll be on your wish list. It's incredible. But the young leaves look kind of like this. Like that, I'll show you another one. I've had this a long time, by the way. So, fun fact about this plant, I can tell you exactly how slowly it grows. Get this. I've had this plant since I went to um, Netherlands last year when I filmed the documentary. I got this on the same day that I got the large glorious in my studio, right? It was on episode three, I think, when I went and I did everything for the wall. I picked up the Gloriosum, I picked up this because um, I think I got this private sale anyway. And it was a one leaf cutting. Now, the, the leaf was bigger. It was like an original leaf and obviously that's come off all the time. Cool. And this is what's grown since. Danny in the lot. It's had good light. It's had feed. It's had everything. Now it is growing. Obviously I'm not, you know, ungrateful for the growth I have, but I didn't think it'd be this slow. And honestly, that's just because it's Monstera. And I guess you don't think about that, do you? Because we know Monstera to be quite aggressive growers, I would say, across the board. I can't think of many Monsteras that don't grow quickly, especially when they get going. But I've had this so long. And if you look at the back, yes, we've got some growth. Can you see him there? Yeah, he's, he's probably choppable. I, I don't want to chop him, but I might for insurance. I'm not sure. I, I need to think about what I want to do with him. Yeah, that's how long I've had this guy. And he's still, he's still like this. That's a long time, do you know? And I've had plenty of other things that do not take this long to grow. So unfortunately, as much as I love him, I've yet to see him in his full glory. And I literally think it's going to be another year to do that. I'm considering putting him upstairs in the studio because I feel like things in the studio generally do not question me and they just grow really well no matter what. So I might do that, to be honest, because it's getting a bit silly now, isn't it? But yeah, that's what the growth kind of looks like. It is really weird, but as I say, Google them. You will not be sorry. I promise you that. They're not necessarily well known. But it is very, very, very rare Monstera. It's, I don't know how many people have these. It depends on the country, but even then they cost a bomb. I would say they're worth it, but I'm not going to just because of the experience I've had. Beautiful plant. It's not that I don't find them, you know, not hardy or something like that. It's just, I just expected more growth. And I mean, it could be me. So if you have one of these, um, let me know how quickly it grows um, because mine just ain't really. And it's never been cut either since I got it. Look at the size of the node. That is absolutely tiny, absolutely tiny. <sighs> right then. So this next plant I'm gonna show you is a Monstera. I have, I have a couple of these, but honestly, I couldn't even tell you where they were in the shop. That's how bad it is. I might have about five. I have no idea where they are in here. No idea at all. I know when I see them because I can ID them quite well. Um, but this here is Monstera Lechleriana. 
and basically as you can probably see it's, it's grown well so you might be thinking well what's your problem um we've got a lot of yellowing if i tip this up or try to can you see that there a lot of yellowing it's a little bit shit actually um now the main reasons i think this is it was between light and feed for me now i'm gonna go out on a limb and guess it was light and i will tell you why so i have some shelves over this way that are significantly shorter than these shelves right but i have a lot of tall plants so they tend to grow on these shelves because there's more room and i don't burn them and everything else but this plant here when it was smaller i took a cutting from a bigger piece that's how i know there's more somewhere and i stuck it on a little shelf where the light's about i don't know that far from the plant and i think what's happened is it's been on that shelf it's grown towards the light it's got absolutely bleached because it's monstera and it hates life it hates light just hates it i've removed it and I've put it elsewhere because this I picked this up from the floor. And I think what's happened is the yellowness has steadily gone away, look, because these leaves have not grown under that condition. So in my opinion, this is a light thing and not a feed thing. Now, don't get me wrong. It could do with a bit of a feed. I can see that it's not, I don't know what it's looking like on camera. It's not quite perfect, especially this one here. Plus we now have smaller foliage, but, but we also have smaller foliage because now this plant has nothing to support itself and you may find that at home if your plant grows off a pole or off whatever it is the leaves are going to go small the plant's not stupid it, it knows it can't support weight like that unless it's monstera deliciosa but even then to be honest they do the same thing so if you're finding that it's not necessarily feed it could just be because it's off you know it knows that it's out on its own basically so i'm gonna go on a limb and i'm gonna say that this one is light and not feed but i will show you it again because you know what the roots are great there you go. That's the, the full situation with this plant. It's all right. It's not going to die. It's okay. It's just less than perfect. I don't know what to do with this. Yeah, I don't know what to do with them, but we'll see. But I, I think he's fine. I honestly think this was the light thing because the next few leaves have been, they've been okay. Okay, the next plant I have to show you is two plants, but they are the same plant, right? These two very nasty looking plants right here are Anthurium vesei. I got these, wow, when did I get these? I got these well before my tour of the shop that I did earlier on this year. You might remember them on a video. They were kind of, they'd just come in, so I didn't know how they were going to do. They were very recently brought in and I've had them since. So these here, the big leaves that you see that are crispy, they're the original leaves. So you're probably thinking, okay, what's happened? I'm not sure. Now I get this problem from time to time. I don't know if it's light or nutrients in this case. This is something that I'm not as experienced with. I do very occasionally get anthurium where the leaves actually come through very deformed like this. If you look, they're not coming through like a big flat plate. Same thing as this one here. This is why I wanted to show you this. See, that's a new leaf. Um, it is hardened off though, and it's hardened off really weird. I don't know if that's light or nutrients. I almost want to say it's light, but I don't know. Honestly, if you know in the comments and you've had this problem, let me know what it is because I don't get it on every anthurium. I don't necessarily get it on certain types of anthurium either. It's kind of random a little bit, which is why I don't really understand what's happening. I'm not really sure. What I can tell you is the roots are doing great. Can I hold that up there? Yeah. The roots are nearly every single one that I have. I think I have about five or six. I think I have five. They're all doing great root rise, like clearly not a problem, you feel me? But the, the rest of the situation is is not good. I can't see any pests before anyone says, oh, is it pests? These are absolutely, completely and utterly bare of any pest, actually. There's not a fleck on them. Um, my pest control is pretty, it's quite aggressive. I'd go as far as to say it's aggressive in the shop. Um, so it's not that. We can rule out that. It could just be prolonged damage. It could be water sitting at the bottom. It could be anything. Um, I don't really want to think that it's a water issue because a lot of the anthurium get it and they're all fine. I've got tons, tons around me and they're all getting the same thing. Now this plant could be more sensitive, I don't know, but it's this that I want to solve, this weirdness right here. So here's a really old leaf that it obviously came in with, really, really pretty plant. Um, it's kind of like a crystalline and only darker and more intense, I think, on the veining. Um, this is uh, the newest, well, next newest one and it's gone real weird. Um, this is a super old one here, like such. And then the new one here that appears to be fine now, but who knows how it's actually gonna grow. So yeah, Anthurium bessii, don't know what the problem is. I really don't. If you do know, let me know. I can't offer you any other information other than it's in the same place as everything else that's Anthurium and it's not doing it. These do it. 
I occasionally get, I'm looking at one on the wall that's doing a little bit of a twisty, I occasionally get Magnificum doing it. Uh, I think I've had a Regal do it. That's not a Regal, is it? I don't think that's a Regal up there. I can't tell. Um, yeah, literally only certain ones, and even then it won't be every one, it'll be just the odd one. So if you know why this is happening, let me know. I don't think I can diagnose this one. This is the only one that I'm like, hmm, okay, I don't actually know what's going on. So that was the last of my plants, just some random picks from the shop and kind of diagnosing them, I suppose. It's not quite the video I set out to do, but it's kind of evolved over filming it. If you would like me to do a video of pulling out a plant from my shop, because it's the best examples I've got, right? More like common problems with plants and maybe either see me just live diagnose them and what I think it could be, or even something more informational on different problems that plants can have and what it is. Let me know in the comments and I will try and come up with, you know, a format that suits that best and do that video for you. If you have any other suggestions for videos, please leave them in the comments below. I did mention on my last video that essentially when I walked around to pick plants for this video that I found some really gnarly stuff. And if you want me to put that in a video, just literally showing you just some of the gnarliest stuff that I've got here, let me know in the comments and I will absolutely make that for you. Thank you very much for watching this video. I know it's hectic. I feel like that didn't get fixed, you know? I don't think that's changed. You probably can't see because I'm the... Just this, this monstrosity in the corner, I don't think it's fixed. I'm gonna go and ask. But thank you very much for watching this video. I know it's chaotic, I've got no makeup on, I'm not feeling myself at all, it's been a shit week. If you like this video, please leave a like down below, and if you'd like to see any more of my content that is definitely not this chaotic, then please feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you next week. Bye!